everybody and welcome. I've been spending more time underwater lately since my son has been doing his open water diver certification and this got me thinking. There are a lot of similarities between scuba diving and spacewalks and the commercialization of each of them. This will be mostly a talking head type of video so feel free to minimize it and just listen to my voice if you can stand it, since apparently some of you really seem to hate it. So what am I talking about? Diving and spacewalking have actually quite a few things in common. You are moving through an environment that can potentially kill you. To survive you need special equipment. Both require you to bring along your own supply of breathing gas and therefore you need to know how to handle pressure vessels. You need to take care uh, to keep your body temperature at the correct levels. A dive and a spacewalk both require good planning before executing. You need to be trained to know what to do in case of an emergency. And finally, you should never go out alone. I'm sure there are more items that could be added to this list, but I think you get where I'm coming from. If you follow the space news cycle, you have probably heard that NASA has now outsourced the development of spacesuits for landing on the moon as part of their Artemis program to private companies. One is Axiom Space, the other Collins Aerospace. These suits should not just be used for lunar landings, but also replace the aging suits on the ISS that keep having problems in the past years. For instance, water leakage inside the hem helmet, which can be deadly. While spacewalking as well as diving, you don't want water where it is not supposed to go. Currently, there are a few different suits in operation. The flight suits for SpaceX's Crew Dragon and for Soyuz that can keep the crew alive in case of a depressurization, but will not hold up long out there in space. Then there are the bulkier EVA suits from NASA and the Russian Orlan suit. Just as flight suits and EVA suits serve their different purposes, there are different types of suits for diving. Depending on the environment you plan to dive in, you will choose a different type of protection, from thin short-sleeved wetsuits to heavy-duty dry suits that almost look like spacesuits. For the latter you also should get a special training, just like before donning an EVA suit. What all of these have in common is, they are there to keep their users safe. Underwater or in space, a faulty suit can cause an emergency or even death. The first spacewalker, Alexei Leonov, almost died during his spacewalk during the Voskhod 2 mission because his suit expanded and restricted his movement. That's why I was a bit anxious when private companies took over suit development. Profits and project timelines can get into the way of quality and safety. I surely hope this is neither the case for Axiom or Collins and that they will deliver a suit that will keep astronauts safe at all times. The importance of this cannot be overstated. Better delay a launch or two to make sure your suit is working flawlessly before taking such a risk. Speaking of private companies, while they are now involved in multiple areas of the world's space programs, we are still in the pioneer phase of space exploration or space flight for that matter. And here is where in my opinion the biggest difference to modern diving comes to light. The commercialization. If you are not a diver you might still have heard about SCUBA. It's actually an acronym for self-contained breathing apparatus and some of you may remember it was pioneered in the first half of the 20th century by Jacques Cousteau. But he was not the only one. While Cousteau did co-invent the first open circuit system to produce an underwater documentary in 1943, it was Austrian zoologist Hans Hass who invented a small closed circuit system together with German company Dräger in 1941 that was commercialized after the Second World War. 
Haas was also the first person to make color photographs underwater in 1942, together with his wife Lotte. He was sort of a national hero here in Austria before dying in 2013. What I'm trying to say is that the development of scuba diving goes to show that at a given point in time, multiple people can and will have the same or similar ideas. A little side note, Haas claimed he prevented a shark attacking him by diving straight at it and screaming while doing so. If true, the poor shark was probably utterly confused what just happened. Anyhow, since that time of pioneers some 80 years ago, millions of people have been scuba diving and it has become a sport like many others. And still, diving is about inserting your body into an environment that will kill you if you don't take the necessary care. This will never change, no matter how many recreational divers are out there, and there are in fact millions. We are now at the dawn of space commercialization. The first space tourists are already doing some suborbital hops aboard Blue Origin's New Shepard, and the Inspiration4 and Polaris missions are designed to push the envelope of what a fully private crew can do. Just as flying was reserved for the ultra-rich a hundred years ago and is now ubiquitous at discount prices, there will come a time when you will be able to book a vacation on an orbital resort and take a spacewalk over there. Probably this will not be as quick as it was with flying because of the increased difficulty, but it will happen one day. The broad commercialization of space and spacewalks can only be done in a safe way if companies like Axiom and Collins do their homework and create suits that can be worn and operated by anyone with minimal training in the future. You will still have to follow some rules, you will need to plan your excursion and you will have to go out as a team, just like you do in scuba diving. You never dive alone for safety reasons so that your body can help you in case of an emergency. <laughs> Personally, I can't wait for that time to come. If I can afford a spacewalk, I will be out there as soon as I can, but I will make sure I have the necessary training, the correct equipment and have people I trust around me when preparing and going out there. So, if you are a space nerd like me and think, hey, I always wanted to go diving and think about it as a sort of wet spacewalk, sure, go for it. But keep in mind that this is similar to a spacewalk, just on easy mode. Well, easier. There are ways to screw things up and injure or even kill you. So make sure you have the correct training equipment and people. I'm curious. Has anyone of you been diving? How do you think about comparing it to a spacewalk? Let me know in the comments if I'm talking rubbish, or you can click the link in the description to join my Discord server, where we can have a chat without all those pesky YouTube comment spam bots. Also, if you enjoy this video or my content in general, you can either subscribe to my channel or sign up over on my Patreon site, where you can support this channel with a small contribution it would be very much appreciated. So I hope this video doesn't scare you away from diving, because I think it is just awesome and me and my family enjoy it very much. Just keep in mind what you're literally getting into. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.